Saudi Arabia to teach them the women to read and write because the queen of Saudi Arabia was his half-sister, mother of the guy who got killed. So you see how it is all connected? Yes. And, and, and I don't know what, what is happening, why they wanted to, to this guy, because I, I don't think he, he was involved in me, me, uh, anything. I know well, we, we don't really we don't really know. Uh, I mean, uh, we're we're about we're coming up on Saudi Arabia and the talking points here, and we're going to go over what we do know and, and what is speculation. Uh, but uh, obviously, the situation is very dynamic right now, uh, and uh, officially, what's going on in Saudi Arabia is supposed to be uh, arrests for corruption, uh, but it does have all the hallmarks of being a purge to consolidate power. Now, whether this airplane with all of these high-ranking Saudis on it uh, was sabotaged or shot down, or if it's just one of those every once in a while they happen for real plane crashes, we don't know yet. Uh, but it's very obvious that the political landscape in the Middle East is, is changing dynamically right now. Uh, the Saudi-backed uh, Prime Minister of Lebanon has just stepped down. And Hezbollah is cheering this as a victory. They want to get somebody who's prime minister of Lebanon who's going to be thinking about the people of Lebanon rather than the Saudi interests in the region. So Saudi Arabia may be flexing its muscle and saying it's time for Saudi Arabia to be the controlling power in the region, which inevitably is going to bring them into direct conflict with Israel. Yeah, I, I always thought that was not going to uh, be, be the case. I thought, always thought that Saudi Arabia and Israel would always be together. But it seems to be something is happening. Yeah, it does. It, it, it does feel like uh, Crown Prince Salman uh, is pulling away from uh, not just Israel, but from the United States as well. So, and then it's going to be a. Uh, I don't know. It, it's going to be a mess. Then. It's going to be a mess. There's no question about it. The whole, the whole Middle East is about Agreed to go up in flames. Agree with you there. And, and I've seen also your article about the weather. Uh, you keep them up because it's get, it's, the weather here in Iceland is getting really funny. Uh, uh, well, I, Iceland's a beautiful or, place. I've never been there. I, I'd love to visit, and uh, but of course not when the volcano is erupting. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for the phone call. We're going to let you go here and get on back to the news here. Now, the U.S. is now boosting Special Operation Forces presence at Russia's border. And basically it is signaling the U.S. is developing a capability to deliver rapid, deep strikes into Russia territory. So remind me again why Russia is being the aggressor here. You don't see Russian Spetsnats on the northern side of our border with Canada or the southern side of our border with Mexico getting ready to just launch attacks into our territory, right? Just keep that in mind every time you hear Russian aggression, Russian aggression, Russian uh, aggression. So let's talk about what's going on in Saudi Arabia. Uh, there, there have been 11 royals, 11 members of the royal family have been arrested along with four government ministers, all supposedly for corruption. And interestingly enough, all of these people were uh, tied into Hillary Clinton and Podesta uh, and the Clinton Foundation. So it may genuinely be the start of an anti-corruption purge uh, within their country. Certainly it's going to consolidate power for uh, uh, Crown Prince Salman as he gets ready to assume the throne. And, of course, we have these uh, eight high-ranking Saudi officials and Prince bin Mugrin were in a helicopter that crashed near the Yemen border. They were uh, uh, apparently uh, taking a look at what's going on with the war in Yemen, and the helicopters crashed. No word if it was shot at or a mechanical breakdown or what. But the, uh, 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 the uh, Saudi prince, Prince Abdul Aziz bin Fad, was killed uh, during a firefight when the uh, uh, Saudi government forces went to arrest him. His own security detail uh, got into a firefight with those forces and the prince was uh, killed as well. So it's an ugly situation over there. These are some of the world's richest men who are now being arrested, and they're all claiming it's unfair, and they're they're they're, you know, threatening all kinds of consequences. Now, the other wild card out there is this missile launch that came from Yemen 
that got uh, near the Riyadh airport. And Saudi Arabia is saying that uh, Iran is responsible for this. And it can be considered an act of war. Now, that's a bit of a stretch. That's like saying that if, uh, let's say, uh, Israel is attacking Lebanon with U.S. supplied weapons and Lebanon says the U.S. has carried out an act of war against them. And an argument could be made for U.S. government culpability. Uh, but the way they're trying to spin this uh, missile attack from Yemen, who is currently in a state of war with Saudi Arabia and, and has every right uh, to fight back, but they're trying to put it over to Iran. And Saudi Arabia is now saying they reserve the right to respond to Iran's hostile actions. There have been no hostile actions. The hostile action came from Yemen. But what it looks like is the U.S. government, just as they use Saudi Arabia as a, a proxy to go to war against Yemen. Okay. Uh, it looks like the, the U.S. government is using Saudi Arabia to start the war with Iran. I mean, they're putting pedal to the metal on all of this. They've got to get all these wars going before the U.S. economy collapses so that they've got somebody or something to blame it on. Meanwhile, Saudi forces have now closed all air, sea, and land access to Yemen. It's a total blockade, and they're using it to starve the people of Yemen, which is a war crime. Now, one article is out here in Blacklisted News saying that the Saudi purges aren't about corruption. They're about economic compliance, and maybe that's an overlapping agenda. But again, the situation is very complex, and it's very fluid. Now, something that should be of concern, because it, it's looking to me like the Middle East could literally explode. And underscoring that, Israel has just begun the largest ever aerial military drill. Air forces from nine different countries with about 50 aircraft are now starting to drill in the most southern region of Israel using Ovda Air Base in Israel, which is down near the Golan. They've got teams from India, the United States, Greece, Poland, France, Italy, and Germany will be flying over 300 sorties simulating a real war. So they're definitely cranking up. They know there's going to be a regional war. Now, getting on over to North Korea, tensions are definitely heating up. And what's really alarming people uh, is that uh, we have the U.S. now saying they might strike at North Korea if there's an imminent threat of a nuclear attack from North Korea. Well, the U.S. could go ahead and attack North Korea. Where would be the evidence that there was an imminent threat being responded to, especially after all the lies about Saddam's nuclear weapons and Assad sarin gas and everything? Once again, the U.S. Uh, government is just taking the attitude of, just take our word for it. Well, there was an imminent threat, really. We, we had to do this. We wouldn't lie to you. We're the U.S. government. What's really alarming, and I made this point before when they were talking about a decap strike into North Korea. There's no guarantee they would get all the ballistic missiles. There's no guarantee they would get all the nukes. By now, I'm sure Kim Jong-un has dispersed them all across the country into very good hiding places. And now the latest report coming out of the Pentagon is saying that the only way they can go into North Korea and guarantee the end of the nuclear program and the ballistic mo uh, missile program is a ground invasion. And the numbers are startling. Even Senator Dianne Feinstein was saying it's a, a bleak assessment looking at how many people are going to be killed and crippled in a ground invasion of North Korea. Now, Viktor Bondarev, the head of the Russian Upper House's Defense and Security Committee, has outlined in an interview with Sputnik that the best way to contain growing U.S. aggression is to start establishing more Russian bases in places like Cuba and Vietnam. Now, remember back when Obama started normalizing relations with Cuba, and I said it was one of the smartest things he'd done, one of the few things he'd done I agreed with, because if we made friends with Cuba and Cuba was now doing commerce with the United States, then Cuba would be removed as a potential Russian base in the event of an escalating war. 
And so Donald Trump comes into office. His advisors say, no, 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 we've got to punish Cuba, you know, for uh, we've been punishing them for almost a half a century here. And we've got to go on punishing them until they will do what we tell them to do. And they have now created a repeat of the situation in which Cuba was forced to turn to the Soviet Union following the U.S. blockade. And now it's all being repeated again. Trump is getting bad advice from his people. They come up with an idea. It sounds good. They go with it. Nobody is doing a careful analysis all the way through of what might actually be the downside of all of this. Everyone's thinking it's going to be win-win. No, this is headed for lose-lose. But it may be that the U.S. government just feels that they're totally trapped. They can't stop the war agenda. They, they quit and turn around. The economy is going to collapse. So they're going to keep on going forward until either the nation is destroyed or maybe they're just praying for a miracle that somehow they will still prevail. I don't think they can. We're going to take another break here for commercials. Back with the economic news after these few words. And aloha, America. Welcome back to our show here. And uh, getting on back to the news here. Uh, we're going to talk about the uh, economic news here. A lot of troubling indicators. And like I said, I think what's going on here is the U.S. government understands they cannot hold this illusion of a healthy economy together much longer. And if the economy implodes and they don't have somebody to blame it on, the American people are going to point the finger of blame justifiably at Wall Street and Washington, D.C., so the idea is to get the wars going and saying, oh, well, yes, you're all going hungry and you're suffering and everything, but it's all the fault of those gosh darn Iranians and the Russians and the Chinese. And if they hadn't challenged the dollar with the ruble and the yuan, everything would be just fine. No, it wouldn't. Private central banking is a Ponzi scheme. It's a pyramid. And sooner or later, it's going to crash. So that's why they're in a rush to get all of this stuff going. Now, PBOC's Zhao is warning of sudden, complex, hidden, contagious, hazardous risk in the global markets. This is out of the Chinese Central Bank. Their governor uh, has penned this lengthy article saying that there are some hidden dangers there, even as the overall health of the financial system appears good. It really isn't. Now, again, the U.S. foreign policy toward China uh, seems somewhat schizophrenic because on the one hand they're approaching China to try and rein in and control North Korea and on the other hand they're still butting heads with the Chinese over the islands in the South China Sea and now there is the trade war issue uh, because part of Donald Trump's uh, campaign promises on the campaign was to be tough on Chinese imports and so the U.S. 